Hi, I'm Coach Ryan. This is Coach Marty. We're from Function and Strength. Uh, welcome back for day three, eccentric, uh, the weighted version. Uh, we also have the body weight, so if you're on the wrong one, flip over. Uh, if you haven't done your dynamic warm-up, go ahead and stop now, pause, go back to your warm-up. Hopefully you've already done it, and then you're in the right place. Today's workout, we're gonna need same as day one and day three, med ball if you have it, or towel, uh, bands, dumbbells, barbells, bench, pull-up bar, hex bar if you have it. So if you don't have any of that equipment, let's gather that up so we can kind of just roll right through. So again, today, similar exercises, but weights are gonna change, right? They're gonna change because we're changing tempo. So most of the lifts today, uh, in the strength portion are going to be three sets of five reps with a four second down, with a four second eccentric. All right, so hopefully we have different weights, different loads to use uh, so we can get the right stimulus. Okay, again, plyos are going to change. We're going to start there. Core is also going to change, and the conditioning is a little bit different today, also. All right, you ready, coach? Okay. All right, so we're going to start uh, with the first three plyometrics. Number one is going to be a single leg medial lateral hurl hop with stick. Okay, long beam. Essentially, we're jumping from one leg over an object, sticking that landing. Go ahead, coach. Show me one. Good. Good pausing in between. So we do three over and back on the left, and then we switch to the right. If you don't have a really solid object to use, please don't use anything. We don't want you to trip, fall, roll an ankle. Coach will show me one or two. Imagine there's something there, still trying to jump fairly high, but we want to be able to stick that landing. Great job. All right, exercise two is going to be a rotational squat jump. So you, you can move over here, Coach. So he's going to start facing forward. He's going to give us a good squat jump, big rotation, solid landing. And then he's going to take that back. All right, and it'll be three jumps over back as one rep. And then the last exercise we're doing in this series is going to be a tall kneeling med ball chest pass rapid fire. So, Marty, have you shown the, uh, the ball real quick? Yes. This is one of the, the, the softer ones. So it comes back fast, but it's not a hard rubber one. It goes back even faster. So we want to make sure that we're prepared to catch that ball. If we don't have the ball, towel, rolled up, or in a knot, the best you can to rapid fire off that wall. You might have to get a little bit closer. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go through two sets of all three exercises. So if you wanna use an object to jump over, great, make sure it's safe. If it's not real solid and stable, please don't use anything. Just pick a line on the floor, okay? Here we go, we're gonna go over and back to three with a stick. Good, that's it. So if you're losing your balance, you might not jump as high, and that's okay, that's learning, right? We want to stick the landing. It's actually easier to do a continuous jump. We want to stick that landing, control that movement. Good jumps each time. Good, now we have three on each leg, over and back. Awesome job, we're going to go to those rotational squat jumps now. So we're going to have a big squat jump, good rotation. Stick that landing solid, and then bring it back. We're gonna do three of these, take your time. If you can't land correctly, if you're all over the place, don't rotate as much. Good, one well, reset each one, stand up before you go back down. Nice job, take it to the wall. Tall kneeling, mid ball, chest pass, rapid fire, or using a towel, all right, whatever you have. So that's 10 reps there, right? Nice and fast. So as we finish, we need to rest. Take that rest. It's important to rest during the power components. We want to make sure we're fully recovered to repeat the same output that we just did. We want to be able to put the same effort in, okay? We're going to move a little bit quicker here. So coach is going to go. If you're not ready, just hit the pause button. Good. Jump as high as we can and we can control that landing. Landing in an athletic position so that we're ready to repeat a jump, right? So wherever we're doing, we want to land in a position that will allow us to now repeat something, move a different direction, right? Landing position is very important. You can 
you're doing the landing positions fairly quiet, we're absorbing that force through the whole body. Nice job, we're going to our rotational squat jumps. We have three each direction. Good jump, solid landing, reset each rep. Good. Good solid athletic position landing, jump as high as you can. Control the body in the air, very important. And then good landing. Awesome job, taking it back to the wall. Tall kneeling, mid ball, chest pass, rapid fire. Nice job, so we have 10 reps there, right? All right, nice job, that's the two sets we had. Now we're gonna take it into the dumbbell hang muscle clean. Three sets of five. Coach will demonstrate one or two reps. We're doing these a lot. We should have good form. We should know what we're looking for now, right? So we have our good RDL, good hip hinge, standing tall, getting up and around, elbows underneath. Good rack position, good head to grab. So, so grab your weights, get set up for that. So as we're going through the dumbbell hang muscle clean, you can make this more challenging by moving the weight faster or lifting heavier weight. All right, so that's where we're gonna get some variance in this exercise, is we're gonna improve our form, and as we improve our form, we're gonna be able to lift it heavier, we're gonna be able to lift it faster, all right? And then we make that harder by doing both, and we don't change, right? So yes, we wanna move heavier weight, but we also wanna move it fast and in control with good form. So those three things are gonna determine how much weight we use and how we progress through this. All right, so let's get ready for our first set of five reps. Good first rep, really good hinge, standing up nice and tall, getting the weights up and around, driving those elbows up, feet are solid, planted on the floor, driving through the ground. But, nice job, all right. So again, rest as needed, you might need to rest upwards of a minute and a half to two minutes. All right, we're gonna rest about 30 seconds and we're gonna go again. So if you need to, hit that pause button. Don't race through these. Take your time. Form is very important. Form is everything, right? Quality is everything. All right, coach, you ready to do a second set? Start getting set up. Whenever you're ready, go ahead and start. So as you see, coach turn sideways to give you a different view. We can really see a good hip hinge. Knees are over ankles. We have a vertical shin. As he hinges over to load the posterior chain, shoulders are staying above hips. Back is fairly flat. Good, and they're standing up tall, getting those elbows around. Great job. Again, we'll rest for 30 here, and then we'll do the last set. And then we're gonna get into our strength movements. And again, today's strength movements are gonna be three sets of five reps with a four second eccentric or four second down count, okay? So hopefully these movements are now starting to feel a little bit easier as we're going through them more. You're starting to get an idea of what they should feel like, what they should look like. You're starting to understand these movement patterns and that's, that's what we're really looking to kind of get through these workouts. It's a really good understanding and feel for these movements. All right, here we go, coach, last set. Okay, let's go side view again. I think that, that gives us a, a better look of what, of what we want here. Good, elbows are up nice and high. Good rack position, creating a good shelf. That's important when we do our front squats, right? So as we transition to do hang power cleans, if we don't have a good rack or receiving position, it's gonna make those movements tough, all right? So this, this all builds on itself. This is all building blocks, right? There we go, five reps, nice job. Grab a quick drink if you need to. Hit the pause button, rest. We're gonna be moving into front squats next. So if you have a barbell and we're able to do a barbell front squat, that's where we are right now. If you're at home with dumbbells or kettlebells, we're gonna be right here in the rack position. Again, hopefully it's a different weight from Monday and Wednesday or day one, day two, whenever you did these. Because we're going five reps, Four second down count. Uh, second exercise, the core exercise is gonna be a tuck up. All right, so coach is gonna show us the front squat. 
right? We know what this looks like, right? We're going down slow, correct? We're going to go down slow. We're going to shoulder fronts plateau. though. Driving the knees forward, vertical chest, ribs are down. Fantastic. All right, tuck up. Laying on the ground. Legs are straight. Arms can be overhead. This is a little bit easier. Arms, arms by our side, a little bit harder. There's no momentum here, okay? So we're gonna do up, nice and fast. Down, one, two, three. Everything touches the ground, right? That's gonna protect that low back. So when we're in our down position, we're straight, right? So tuck up, and then down, and everything touches the ground each time, good. So when you do your tuck up, you see coach keeps his heels really close to the ground and pulls them in, that's what we want. We don't want those feet getting way up there. All right, finishing almost a V position, but instead of the legs straight up, they're bent underneath, tucked in, okay? So let's get ready for our front squat, or dumbbell front squat, whatever you have access to. Ready, coach? Ready. I'll count the first rep, and then I'll coach him through the others, and he'll, he'll keep that pace. Five reps. We're going five reps, four second down count. All right, here we go. Four, three, two, and one. Drives up. Good. Keep that pace, coach. So the goal here is to have a steady movement down. We don't want to kind of get hitchy where we're stopping. It's a constant movement all the way down. Once we hit that, that's that trigger to drive up fast, push the ground away, drive the feet into the ground. Nice job. You can take it to the floor. We have our tuck ups. Two sets of 10 with a three second down count. I'll give you the first count. So come on up, and then it's three, two, and one. Good. Coach is gonna count, he's gonna do those reps. If 10 reps is too much, obviously do what you can with good form, okay? If the three second down count is too much, do what you can. We wanna control the set. That's what we're looking for here, okay? So you do what you can do with good form, quality, 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 always, right? Good, so you see everything moves together, he'll stay low to the ground. Key is to touch the back and the feet to the ground after every rep. That way we're not getting into a big arch in that low back. We're able to stay in a good ribs down, hollow body position here. All right, nice job. You might need to take a break after that, especially doing a front squat, which can be a lot of, a lot of anterior core work. So you might need a little break before we hop back into these front squats right away and make sure we're fully recovered. We're gonna get going here pretty quickly just to keep this video moving, but again, pause as need, okay? I'd rather you do it right, do it correctly, take the extra time, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna count the first rep for coach. Ready, and four, three, two, one. Drives up, good, he's gonna keep going for five reps. Good front squat position, elbows are high. Constant movement, once he hits that one, you see he drives up, right? We want to drive up as fast as we can here. And again, we don't come up on the toes because we're keeping as much pressure into the ground as we can, so we're using that whole foot to drive the ground away from us. Great job. Get set for our next set of tuck-ups. Set number two and last set for the core. Okay, we'll do a third set of the front squats. You ready, coach? Ready. All right, so he's gonna tuck up. Three, two, and one. Comes right back up. Good, we got 10 reps here. Take your time with these, do them correctly. All right, these are challenging, especially adding in that eccentric down, right? Puts us under tension for a long time for these 10 reps. So if you can do 10 reps with a three second down count, fantastic. If you gotta knock off, a second or two in that eccentric, or you gotta knock off a couple reps, that's fine. We'd rather do these right, and then we can always add these in as, as the weeks go on, right? We always get better, we always make it more challenging. Nine, one more. One more, here we go. Finish strong. Nice job, there it is. All right, so again, rest as needed. Get ready for our last set of front squats. Dumbbell front squats, whatever you have at home, right? 
Guys, also remember too, at the top of the rep, start right into that eccentric movement. Don't take your pause at eight, pause at the top. Right, good point. So at the top of that rep, what he means is, I'll show it as he rests, it's four, three, two, one, it's up, and then it's four, three, right, and then right back into that down count, all right? Try not to hang it at the top in between reps. Good point, coach. Here we go. Ready, four, three, two, and one. He drives up, he's gonna count the other reps. Five total. Good form here. Knees are forward, hips are down. Okay, heels are on the ground, even though the knees are pushing forward. And then we're driving up through the ground. Last one. Here we go, last rep here. Five. Nice job. Great work, grab a drink. As you grab a drink, we're gonna go over the next movements, right? We've been doing the dumbbell, RDL. Uh, if you have a hex bar, which I know is probably most stone, or if you have a barbell, you can be doing barbell deadlifts or hex bar deadlifts. If not, we'll be continuing with the dumbbell RDLs. Second exercise is gonna be a bent, hollow, bent knee, hollow body hold. It's gonna be a 40 second isometric. All right, so we're gonna need that mat again. Similar to the tuck up, Okay, but instead of moving through a range of motion, we're going to get into a good hollow body position and we're going to do an isometric there. All right, so let's go over the deadlift real quick. Good, feet are about hip width apart. Shins stay vertical, so knee stays over an ankle. We drive the hips back, right? Hips and shoulders move at the same time. Never let the shoulders get below the hips. We drive up. So this is very important to take our time to learn the difference between a squat and a hinge. All right, we need to, we're, we're spending a lot of time on these things because it's very, very important, okay? Second exercise. Sorry, Coach, this is bend knee hollow body hold, correct? Yes. Awesome. All right, bend knee hollow body hold. So we're starting with the feet are flat on the ground. Step. Feet are flat, knees are bent, ribs are down. Okay. Then we're going to pick the chest up towards the ceiling and the feet come up. And we hold. Go back down, coach. Show me a bad rep where people tend to curl up on this one. Good. Back down. Show me a good one. Good. Rest. So everyone can see the difference. We don't want to fold in half. We want to raise that chest to the ceiling while keeping the ribs down. It's going to make a huge difference in doing this correctly and feeling in the, in the right areas. All right. So here we go, we have three sets of the RDLs. We have two sets of the bend knee hollow body holds. And we're gonna get started. So we have our five reps, four second down count. I'll count the first rep. Ready, four, three, two, and one. He drives off and he starts that second rep right away. Good, so again, posterior chain. We wanna feel the hamstrings and a lot of the glutes. We wanna protect the back. Right, ribs are down, drive the hips back. Only go as far as you can with good form. Shoulders stay above the hips. Good, nice job. We don't have to take that to the floor, right? We don't have people who want to do the RDLs and finish here. Just finishing where we can with perfect form. All right, so let's get on the ground. Let's get yourself set. Feet on the ground. Knees are bent, ribs are tucked. We're gonna go up in three, two, and up. Nice job. So we're gonna hold this for 40 seconds. So if you can't make it the full 40, just do what you can. All right, ribs are down. Key is, I should have said this earlier, back is flat to the ground, right? There is no room for hands or a towel or even a sheet of paper. We're driving that low back into the ground. The hips are tucked underneath. Ribs are down, chest is up. And we should be feeling this all through the anterior abdomen, okay? Three in there. Five seconds. Almost there. Three, two, and rest. Nice job, take it up. So again, if you need a little bit longer rest here, let's go ahead and take that. If you're able, we're gonna get right into the next set of uh, dumbbell RDLs, hex bar deadlift, barbell deadlift, okay, whatever you have at home, okay? All right, here we go. You ready, Coach? Ready. Four, three, two, and one. He drives up. Great. So make sure we're really pushing those hips back. 
Great, taking it down as far as we can with good form. Keep reaching, 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 all right? If you're feeling low back here, you gotta reset yourself. Maybe we're starting in the wrong position. Maybe we gotta start hips underneath, ribs down. If you're having a hard time here, you can always slightly elevate those toes. So grab a, I shot a grab plates or something very small and just kind of put your feet up. That'll help you find your hips backwards. We gotta be careful doing that with too heavy a weight though. All right, but that's definitely a good learning tool to help us find those hips back. Okay, ready coach? Good. So bending hollow body hold 40 seconds, feet are flat, knees are bent, ribs are down. Going up in three, two, and up. Good, again, we have 40 seconds here, okay? Wanna feel the abs, anterior core, anterior stability, no back pain. We shouldn't be feeling this in the back, right? So we, we make sure that's happening by getting the hips underneath, the ribs down, driving into the floor. Feet are as an inch off the ground or lower. The lower you keep those feet to the ground, the harder this is gonna be. And then if the heels are closer to the butt, it's a little easier, further away, a little bit harder, but we don't want straight legs. We wanna make sure we have a good bent knee. Three, two, and rest, nice job. So we're done with those, right? We've got our last set of deadlifts coming up with that barbell, hex bar, or if that's an RDL. So again, if you have, right, the hex bar or the barbell, we're gonna be able to get more weight on there. Okay, ready coach? Ready. Here we go, four, three, two, and one. Drives up, nice job. Continue on, making sure we're pushing through the whole foot. So even if you are raising those toes up, doesn't mean we're floating the toes. We're still able to drive that big toe into the ground. We're pushing through the heel. Look at the toes like a triangle. All three points of that triangle should be equally creating pressure into the ground to drive us up. And by getting into the right position, to top every time. Nice job. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break, grab some water, uh, rest, and we're gonna move into bench press, dumbbell bench press, and chin-ups. Okay. All right, so we just changed positions. So now we do our, our bench press and our pull-ups, all right? So we're gonna be doing dumbbell bench press today. If you have a barbell, great. If you have a, a cable machine with a press or a single cable with a press, a band, whatever you have for your weight, that's what we're doing for the bench press. All right, so coach will go over the technique real quick. And lay down, way to start up. He's going to control down for four seconds. When he hits that four, he's going to drive up and then instantly starts that second rep. Go ahead, Coach Brass. You can see feet are planted solid, solidly on the floor and there's no big arch in that low back. So ribs are down, pushing into the bench. All right. Second exercise is going to be chin ups. So obviously, if you have a, a chin up bar or a pull up bar, we're going to use that bar. If not, lat pull down will work. Make sure it's underhand grip. Also, the band. So, coach is going to show the chin up real quick. So, if you can pull yourself up, great. If not, you'll jump up and just lower yourself down for four seconds. Reset. So, you see, coach use the box. If these are really easy and you can just go down slow and pull right up, fantastic. And then band. So, make sure you secure the band tight. We have a chin up grip. We're going to pull down and then we're going to go up slow. Right, because our arms are straightening, and then it's going to be down fast, and then straight. Okay? Great. So let's start with the bench press, wherever that is for you. We're going to use dumbbells. I'll count the first rep. The coach will finish the rest. we got five reps here, three sets of five. So we're up. Here we go. Four, three, two, one. Good. Drives right back up. Starts the second set right away. Number nine. Pausing it all, right? It's a nice movement, four seconds down, driving up. Five reps, four seconds, feet are flat into the ground, driving that back into the bench, last rep. Finish the knee up, very important there, right? A lot of people come and they just drop the floor. Finish that fast up, and then wait to go down. All right, coach is gonna start with band today. A lot of people seem to be using these, so I wanna make sure we get good videos of it, okay? So underhand grip. Driving down, slow up, four, three, two, 
One, good. You can see the shoulder blades driving down, okay? Back and together as we do these. Good, we have five reps here. Even though we're in a half kneeling position or tall kneeling position, the ribs should be down. We don't have a big arch to that back. Great, last one, finish it strong. Okay, so on that last rep again, right? You finish with a good pull, right? We don't just let go on that eccentric. All right, here we go. Back to the bench press. If you need longer rest, go ahead and take it. And we're gonna kind of keep rolling here, okay? Good, yep, arms are up. Four, three, two, and one. Drives up, continues on. Good, solid pace. Good, you see the elbows are roughly at a 45 degree angle. Okay, we don't want elbows up here when we bench. We don't want hands in. Okay, wrists are right above elbows. Coming down at a solid 45, and then driving up. Nice job. Right, take it back. This set is do uh, set of pulls. So again, jump up in between each rep or pull up. So we're going to start in the up position. I'm going to go down to four, three, two, and one. Jump back up. Coach is going to continue on for five reps. Best you can. Okay, just like earlier, this might be really, really challenging to go four seconds down. Do what you can. All right? We want to try and get in the five reps. That's important. We want to try and keep that four second pace. Okay, the best you can. A good eccentric and finish. Good, nice job. All right, here we go. One more set of each. If you need more rest, you're gonna take that rest. We're gonna keep moving through this though, okay? So if you're using appropriate weight, you're gonna want rest here, okay? So hit pause as you need to, okay? Here we go, first last set. Four, three, two, and one, driving up. Good, good elbow position, good wrist position on the top of those elbows, driving up. Feet are flat and the ground is driving into the floor, so we're using that whole body. Hips are tucked on their knees, ribs are down. Push that low back into the bench. And make sure we're finishing with a good up rep on that last one. So we're driving those elbows back and down also, and then making sure those shoulder blades are driving back and down also. They're actually starting that movement, and the elbows will follow. Slow and controlled up. Abs are on, ribs are down. Last rep, finish strong. There it is. Nice job. All right, so we're all done now with the plyometric strength and core. We're gonna move on to the conditioning. So we're back to alactic power, seven second max effort with a two minute rest for six rounds. All right, so running, running uphill, biking, any cardio equipment you have at home, elliptical, rower, whatever it is. Uh, if you're just gonna stay home, it can be as simple as running in place for seven seconds as, as fast as you can, or a wall push for seven seconds. Right. And then we have a two minute rest, two minute recovery, and we're gonna go six rounds of that. Uh, if you're watching this on week two, that's going to change. That's going to go up to 10 seconds, and the rest goes up to three minutes. All right, so this is week two. It's going to be a 10-second max effort uh, with a three-minute rest. But make sure you check Team Builder for exact numbers and sets. All right, see you soon.